Welcome to the second exciting episode of 6DOF Reviews. Podcast, cast, 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 cast. Thank you for joining us for our second episode. We are delighted to be here, delighted to have you here. And of course, who else am I delighted to have here? None other than our founding father, the first Avengers of 6DOF, Mr. Omar Camel. Omar, how are you? I am pretty good. Am Your enthusiasm good. knows no bounds. No My bounds. enthusiasm is always understated. I like to save the best for last. Very well. So we're expecting a you? Dan's number when we get to the, the closing of the show. <laughs> How you uh, I am fantastic. I am what a time to be a VR nerd. I am I am walking on clouds. I have more games to play than I can poke a stick at. And this makes me and happy. there's more to come. And there's more to come. There is indeed more to come. It is a time so, of riches. It, it, you know what? I think, and I, I don't think I'm going out on too much of a limb here to say that 2024 was a bit of a disappointing year for me in terms of releases. It Steady started releases. off very slow, and I remember at some point you were starting to feel that maybe you're just losing your enthusiasm for VR, and then the releases started coming in. Well, they're coming in now. And I think one of the things, 2023, we had a steady release of really good titles all throughout the year, maybe one a month or six weeks. You know, The Cabin was great. You got The Light Brigade, uh, No More Rainbows. There was just this steady drip feed of titles to keep you going <laughs> until we got to that big crescendo at the end where suddenly you had Asgard's Wrath. Asgard's Wrath, Assassin's, Assassin's Creed, Creed Nexus, and yeah. all of that. That's true. This year, I really felt like we got Underdogs, and Underdogs in January was outstanding. And yeah. there were a couple of good titles in the mix throughout the year. And I think in the comments, please, everybody, come in and tell me where I've missed your favorite 2024 you, release. You clearly missed Hitman, man. Hitman, I mean, Hitman was a big shining beacon of VR. I'm sure it sold a million headsets. I, uh, I, I've styled myself. That this was the whole style change was it's based purely on that. that based game. on Hitman. But no, this year, like Max Mustard was pretty good. Uh, Contract the Showdown was is is really good, but it's not my particular thing. But uh, you know that was good. There wasn't too much else. Like it was a steady year of six point fives and sevens, as far as I was concerned. And you're right to say that at one point I had a little VR tanty. I, I was like, I think I'm losing my verve. I think I'm losing my love of the VR. And guess what? It's back. It's back because it's back. Now, I wonder, is this pure off-the-wall hypothesis, but the Quest 3S is about to release. It's the 15th of October, which is next week. It's going to be available on shelves, which means Thursday the 17th. We all know that most releases happen on a Thursday. It will be everybody's big chance to be on the new release section in the first week of all these new Quest 3S owners uh, setting up and seeing what's new. And there seems to be this incredible rush at the moment to get in front of people for that week. So their next week is heavily, heavily laden with new releases. And this week, there's quite, quite a lot coming out. I think there's about six titles uh, launching today. And I wonder if that's necessarily a good thing. There are some of the titles that we're going to talk about that perhaps might have been rushed in order to make that particular landmark rather than taking a little bit more time in the oven and coming out a little bit later on. But we can get onto that a little bit later on. So for today, What's on the docket, Omar? What games, 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 games are we going to be talking about? We've got Frenzies. Ooh. Ooh. We've got a couple of escape room games. One mm -hmm. of them called Escape Simulator, and the other one just called Another Room. Um, what else do we have, Pete? We also are going to be taking a first impressions look at Undead Citadel, a little bit of zombie hack and slash. Uh, and I think we'll be rounding things out with, uh, I think, your soon-to-be obsession from the sounds of things, Into Black. Into Black. Yes. So, <laughs> if it hasn't already become. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, it's really got its claws into you deep already. And I th yes. think before we get into our games, uh, what I want to let everybody know is for this particular episode, we are not going to be delivering to you as many full reviews as we would like to. For reasons beyond our control, we got very late access 
to the titles that are launching today on the 10th. So there are a lot of games that for the best will in the world, we were only able to put one or two hours in uh, so that we could at least talk to you about what's coming out today, but there's not going to be scores on the doors for this one. I think we, we would be really falling down in our diligence if we tried to throw some scores up here just to be uh, hasty. What we are gonna tell you is which ones we're excited to keep playing uh, and which ones we're quite happy to put off onto the dusty shelf for now. But before we get on to that, last week was our first our first week of doing the podcast. And you get a little bit nervous. You don't know how things are going to go. And I was really happy with the response. With the response. So thank you, everybody, who tuned in. Uh, thank you for the three people who watched all the way to the end. You guys are fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't get a lot of views, but we got some really good feedback from the people who did see it. So I, I think I think that's a good thing. I it was. I mean, I particularly enjoyed XXL Flopper 4644, who was really licking our new format, really licking that format. And you know what? I hope it was. He him back. Yeah, it was absolutely fantastic. Uh, he was, they, of course, I'm... XXL Flopper came back into uh, with much embarrassment, realizing the spelling mistake. Um, we had a lot of people who said that they really enjoyed the format. Uh, Lord Val from Hell, you ch uh, chimed in and said, I liked it. Digital Sarkomir, I've probably said that wrong. Great stuff, enjoyed that. Yes, I'm glad that you enjoyed it. Our good friend Black Market Honey was also a, a, a fan. Stuart Burns booed us. Stuart Burns, no, Stuart Burns didn't boo us. I hope you enjoyed your dog walk, uh, Stuart. Something that Omar and I both miss doing. Yeah, we do miss yeah. our dog. Yes, well, we didn't have a dog, we each had dogs. No, we, yeah, we each, yeah, dogs, yeah. Pluralized. Now, yeah. the, the Master Caesar, I have an apology for you, the Master Caesar. Uh, I was going to get the top hat out of the cupboard, uh, but I forgot until right at the last minute, and then we had a, a, a deadline and we had to had to come in. So maybe, Omar, if at any point during the edit, you can edit some sort of top hat on me. I, could try, I, uh... I haven't laughed at a comment as much as I always imagine Pete. Are we looking for a splash-style well, top hat? You can uh, you, surprise me, surprise me, throw in whatever you want. A monocle you if you will. Those words. <laughs> I may. I've always imagined Pete to be a 70 year old man with a top hat. He has quite the quirky voice. That made me chuckle. The master <laughs> seems uh, oh boy, that made me chuckle. Oh boy. Um, and it was great to have so many people uh, chime in and tell us what they liked. Actually, a couple of people said, what they didn't like about the format. And that's completely valid as well. It was done respectfully, and we completely support any comments like that. We, we thank you for the time that you give us. So quick roundup of everybody who chimed in. Thank you so much. We really, I, I'm really eagerly looking at the comments on these, and I hope that you want to chime in with us every week. Tell us what's working, what's not. Tell us which games you're excited for. Uh, we want this to be back and forth as much as we can in this asynchronistic uh type of uh, feedback. So now that we've done that, I think, what are we here for? We're here for games. Should we talk about a game, Omar? Let's, should we talk about a game? Let's talk about a game. That's what we're here for. Very good, very good. Uh, why don't we start with a bit of pew pew? Because everybody likes a bit of pew pew. Do you yeah, pew pew pew? So releasing today from, I think, a really credible studio, End Dreams, a, um, a not quite London-based, they're just slightly out of London. Uh, I have a particular fondness for this studio. Uh, I think they do some really good things, even though I will categorically say that I feel that Ghostbusters was a miss. Otherwise, I think that they produce some really high-quality stuff. And even if the gameplay on their games isn't uh, exactly what you want, there's always polish to it, and I think that's really good. So coming from End Dreams is a new online competitive shooter called Frenzies. Frenzies. Now... Frenzies is a, I, I would class it more as a casual competitive multiplayer shooter. Unlike a lot of games where you, you know, you squad up, you go in with uh, your team and you've practiced your, you've got your favorite weapons and you practice your strategies. There is a big element of randomization that goes into Frenzies, which I think is one of its, its absolute best features. So when you go in, each game consists of five different rounds. And despite the fact that it is predominantly a team-based game, there is a one single winner at the end. 
So during the course of the round, you'll have 12 players that are playing, uh, and some rounds will be team-based. You might have six versus six competing. You might have four teams of three competing. There are some of the game modes that are every person for themselves, free-for-alls, and it's completely random. They have so many different round types, map types, that you can play a five-round game and go back in and not necessarily get the same ones again. And I think that is a huge selling point for the game because it's we're not dealing with uh, squads of sweats that have absolutely practiced where they're going to camp and how they're going to kill you. They might You might go in with your squad and end up trying to shoot them, which is also fun. Well done. Um, one of the key tenants you can tell that they've done with this is they made Fract, and uh, if you haven't played Fract, go back and check out our review of uh, Fract from a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Fract was very much a run and gun meets cover shooter, uh, and it had a cover mechanic whereby instead of having to crouch in the real world, you simply grabbed onto the edge of something and you would pull yourself around. That's a very good cover mechanic. It, it, you know what, for a man with old person knees like me, I thought it worked really, really well. Yeah. Um, but where it fell down is you couldn't dual wield. It was very much like you had to use this hand for your cover and this hand for your pew pew. And I think what they've done is they've gone, all right, well, let's take the basic mechanics because it feels really, really similar to Fract, but let's put it into a competitive, uh, fun online environment. So there's cover points all throughout the, the levels. You can run, you can dash, you can dual wield, but then if you get up to one of these cover points, you use the same cover mechanics that were uh, popularized in Fract. Uh, and it really is, it feels a lot like the best elements of Fract have just been put into a competitive shooter. Uh, it's got a really similar pacing to games like Hyper Dash, for example. It's very fast paced. It's you know, very quick. fast paced. Rounds keep coming. Rounds are short, so you're always engaged in action. Yeah, it, and it's, well, not always engaged in action. And that is one of my little criticisms. I'll get onto that a little bit later. Uh, but predominantly, I'll tell you what, if you're good at the game, you'll always be in the action. You die. <laughs> <laughs> Not so much. Um, it's really bright and it's colorful and it's zany and it's tongue in cheek and it's accessible and it fills a niche in the market, I think, really quite well. It's one of the very last little niches that exists in the competitive shooter world. So in terms of gameplay, as we were saying, it's very fast paced. It's got very simple gun mechanics. Reloads are quite arcadey. It's just a button press to drop your clip and then it'll either automatically reload, like the new clip will appear and if you wait, it'll go into place or you can bang it down onto a, a, a surface. Like for example, if you dump both clips, you can then smack them together to put the clips in or like that. So it's a very simple reload mechanic. It's not one of these ones like Pavlov, where if you've never used that type of gun before, you don't quite know where the thing is. It's, it's not for gun nerds, we'll put it that way. I remember um, the pushing the pushing the, cart the the clip back in is something that I really liked about, I think it was Synapse, which yeah. also had the same kind of ducking mechanic, where you could grab things and, and just sort of push yourself on behind them. I think end dreams know what they do well and they know what people respond to. And if you've got a mechanic that really works and it's appropriate, why not put it in? Oh, so totally. um, oh, yeah. own it and go for it. Yeah. I remember you telling me about that when you were playing, uh, I say, Sina. it was great, but then I don't have a PSVR. So, or PSVR two rather. So I've never played it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a really, it's a really good game. Sony, send me one. Send I don't think that's going to work. Send me one. So there are, a, uh, there are a lot of different game modes and they are really, they're quirky. They're, they're spins on, on types of game modes that you've probably played before. Uh, my personal favorite, there's red light, green light, which I really, really enjoyed. So you get to some point and it's red light, green light, and the whole level it has lights. And as you would imagine, the lights go green, it's a free for all. Every person for themselves, there's no team. You're running around this level with all pillars, so you're kind of coming out and then the lights go red and no one's guns work. And so you then run around and you hide and you put yourself in position, you get ready and then the lights go green and then suddenly it's game on again. That was really, really fun. And again, quite creative. I haven't played red light, green light like that in a shooter before. I really like that. Um, and you have a mode where you have to get to the enemy's base and dance. Yeah, that was really cool. So uh, again, <laughs> there's, uh, what's that? That's King of the Hill or something like that? Where, where... I can't remember what it's called. It might be well, King of the Floor for all I remember. I don't know. I don't remember exactly what it was called, but it was a, it was a funny idea. I've never quite seen that in Shooter. It's never great, seen. actually. It's one of those ones where like the, um, so the, the traditional version of that, I think is called King of the Hill and it's about just occupying a space. 
Um, but the idea that it's a dance floor and you have to get there and boogie, I, I yeah. mean, that's a really cool spin on it. So again, yeah. like thumbs up for it creating. It keeps it lighthearted too. You, you, it's very hard to take yourself seriously when you've got to go to enemy's base and start dancing around. It keeps yeah. it light. Yeah. It really, really does. And the, yeah, you have really good interactions with the other players. You know, that was really cool. Glitter Pig was another one. There's two inflatable pigs just floating through the level and you score points by being the one who's holding it. There's a handle on each one. And so if I've got the pig and you're on my team, you have to defend me because obviously now I've, I can only shoot with one hand. This one's taken up. Yeah, you know, there are a lot of really cool modes and it's about three minutes per game, give or take. So realistically, you can jump in Quick session, 20 minutes. And respawning so, doesn't take that long. I mean, you were saying if you don't play well, you're kind of not action packed, but respawning, I I don't, it didn't take that long to respawn. The game sort of still put you back in. It does. So you respawn in the hub world. So the, the, yeah. the way that mechanic works is there aren't guns littered all over the place. You choose what guns you want to go in with from your, you've got your wall of guns, your arsenal. Uh, armory. Very customizable with all the skins. I was impressed with how customizable your your actual, clo you know, your skin was, and it, it was like, very high texture. I was surprised by the texture detail, actually. Oh yeah, it looks great. And look, all the characters are wearing onesies with like electronic emote faces. Yeah, it's the perfect. Like everyone's got the same general shape to their outfit, but then what you can do within the the realms of that. There's a lot of really, customization really going on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I forgot. Actually, as I'm doing this, I realized there was another comment about how giant my hands seem. And as I'm doing this, I'm like, they're not that giant. Anyway, um, so it's very arcade style. It's very quick. It's accessible. It's casual. Um, if you're good and you stay in it, you'll be just uh, nonstop action. One thing I will say is even though the cover mechanic is cool in concept and for something like Fract, where you're running up into set pieces and it really worked there, in something like this, where the action is coming at you from 360 degrees, there's no, like, it's not like a linear level where you know your point. You don't really have time to slow down and go and cover and stuff. You're going to get flanked. Yeah, I almost never used it. Or if you get too bogged down, because the thing is, the grab points to do it are really quite finicky. And if you slightly miss it, uh, it, it, it just doesn't catch. And so you have to really stop and concentrate on what you're doing. And that can be the death of you. The other thing, and this is a bug that I'm hoping yeah, no, they're going no, to no. is if you get a cover and you go a bit close to a wall, it just blacks your vision out. So you could be in the middle of a gunfight and just lean slightly too far forward and suddenly you, you're you out of the action. You have no idea what's going on. You can I think flip into an object and go blind. Yeah, and I think that's something that needs to be dealt with a little bit better because uh, that was really quite... Uh, like I definitely died many times because I suck, but sometimes because of that, sometimes it was because of that. Um, so yeah, the other thing I'll say, like the, the graphics, it's got an excellent visual style. Like It really does, hats, yeah. Hats off to the art director. It's bright, it's vibrant, it's full of character. The levels are well thought through. They're, they're really, like, it's just so bright, but you can still make everything out. It's not sort of... And it's often, fast and fluid. There's no jank that I remember at all. Mm, you, you're exactly right. I don't remember Jay. Very fast and fluid. The only thing that's a little bit like it's definitely a game where they intend you to intend for you to use your stick to turn. If you turn in real life and you become your whole stick takes a while to catch up. Well, not you, even you, that. Like, it displaces, so it's like when you're you, out of your body. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you. I remember noticing that when I when I first played the game and I found it a little annoying. You can walk out of your body, which is very strange, and if you turn yeah. around physically. Your holsters oh. didn't turn around with you. They have to sort of, once you start moving, they'll sort of readjust their alignment to be looking where you are or to be, you know, uh, aligned with you. But it's a little weird. I wish they deal with that a little bit. And I mean, it's worth saying at this point that this game releases today in early access. Free to play, yeah. this is not the final release. So what we've yeah. played, I've now played about three and a half hours of this game. I've been invited to two of the early clo closed alpha sessions and two uh, press content creator sessions. Uh, I think it's unfair, like it's definitely fair for us to bring up that these are issues. But again, this game is still being worked on. It's early oh, access. No, final early. judgment, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, with that disclaimer in mind. Um, sound effects, everything is great. The uh, the only thing I'll say is the sound effects 
make the guns sound a bit like toys to me. They didn't have that meaty resonance to make、mm. you feel like, "Ooh, I'm shooting a powerful weapon." They kind of had、yeah. that do 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 of a plastic gun, which again、It's、feels. They all sound a little bit electronic. Not really.、Uh, there's there's not meat to them, if you mean that.、Mm. They sound electronic, but then again, I think that just fits the whole vibe vibe of you know of the game. So、uh, not, I wouldn't like it's not problematic as such. No, it's not problematic. It is just something that I noted. Particularly, there was one sort of like a semi-automatic that I was using a lot, and I was thinking this sounds like a like a plastic gun that has you know you buy it for your kids a plastic gun that has like a little thing inside that goes tuk 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 tuk. It had that sort of feel to it. Not a complaint. Just one of those things that again it brings it into that charming, quirky, fun, casual style game as opposed to、uh, if you were playing Zero Caliber Two, for example, and it sounded like that, it would be whack. Like it wouldn't work. But for frenzies, it does. Frenzy does. And it was cool so, at the end when they had the MVP becomes like a big giant and everybody's running around. And- It's fun. It, it, it's fun is really one of the best words for it. It's, it's one of those things. Again, in every session I played, whether it was、uh, whether it was with content creators or really enthusiastic members of the Discord community, everyone was cool and everyone was just there to have a laugh and joke around. And the fact that you get switched into teams throughout the the、uh, the game. I think that's such a masterstroke because you do, you can't be a dick to somebody and then suddenly you're on their team. And then he's on your yeah, they're on your team and suddenly. Yeah. So you did. I, I think that was a really great move to make sure that everybody actually behaves quite well.、Uh, and I thought I thought it was really really good. So you know, I, I I I'm tempted to give it a gut score because I have played it enough to do so. But again, I think because it's early access and it's not a finished product, it's probably not. Appropriate to do that. Other than to round it up by saying, look, overall, in a very crowded market, it finds a place to exist and doesn't tread on anybody else's toes. It is full of polish and will only get more so. And above all else, it is a shooter that wants you to have fun playing it. So those, that's my my roundup. What are your thoughts on before I, I we move to the next one? How do you feel? No, I fully agree with what you just said.、Uh, I mean, I've I've, I've I've got a gut score floating in my head, but like you said, it's probably premature. And again, it would be something that we still have to see what it develops into. So、mm-hmm. yeah, and I like I, I'm not sure about the variety. We didn't really see much of a variety of environments.、Um, I mean, the gameplay well, I, was different, but the environments all had the same kind of look. No, I noticed.、Uh, again, I played a little more than you. Months, you did、so. play a little more, yeah. Yeah, I, I was happy enough. Like the first session that I went in, I, I had that、uh, that thought. But、yeah. as I went into later sessions, they released more of the maps, and they had slightly、okay. different feels. Like they all still have that again, a bit like Hyperdash. They still have that future funk kind of. It has a certain aesthetic to it. Yeah, yeah. It's not like you're going to one. It's like here's the Aztec map, and here's the this map. Like they're all. No. Yeah, yeah. it's all the same. I'm pointing the term future funk for it. But they had their own palettes. There's one that, that very、uh, heavily dealt with the neon colors of this range, and then there were different palettes、uh, occurring. Do you have an educated guess, or do you know how many actual round types there are? I just remember them changing a lot and not quite repeating. So I'm sure there's quite a bit, but I don't remember how many they actually are. Okay, so I don't know the answer to that, and guessing is really journalistically inappropriate. But I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah,、uh, I have a feeling that there was somewhere between eight and ten. Uh, okay. Game modes and、okay. around five or six map types. Now, someone from End Dreams should watch this and then jump into the comments and、uh, answer the question. Yeah. yeah.、Uh, cool. All right. So there you go, everybody. Frenzies releases today. Early access. It is free to play in early access, and there are exactly zero reasons I can think of why you shouldn't give it a shot. That's true. That's What's next, true. Omar? So we've got another door, and we've got、um, Escape Simulator.、Uh, we both jumped into. We we haven't really had that much time to play them. We've basically played one or two rounds each. And、um, another door has a bit of a darker vibe to it.、Nice. Um, a little bit of a horror element in one in the level that we played too, with the little you know zombie kind of figure in in a, in a trapped in a cell and the you know human prisoner looking sort of thing. So it's generally a darker mood. It's a little more grim.、Um, it it I don't know if it started off as a 2D game, but its VR implementation isn't quite 
what it could be. It just feels very rough around the edges. I did enjoy playing it. I mean, just again, it, I, I guess it's that old thing that Doc said, you know, standing in the rain is still fun if you're doing it with friends. Um, so, but it was fun to collaborate together, work out some puzzles, you know, walking around each other, finding little clues, putting things together, making guesses, turning out to be right. Hey, a little bit of, you know, fun. So it was fun working together to, to solve an escape room, which I guess, you know, that's the nature of escape rooms. Um, the implementation, yeah, the VR implementation isn't so great. The graphics aren't so great. They're generally dark and grim. Uh, the VR handling, like it, Come on, it's 2024. We don't really need to keep ducking to pick things off the floor when we drop them on the floor. There should be a quick, you know, teleport sort of uh, grab, remote grab, whatever it's called. Or at least a crouch button. Like, I'm a hole. <laughs> or put a crouch button. But again, just give me a remote grab. I should be able to remote grab things. If, if something falls on the floor, I shouldn't really have to keep bending down all the way to the floor to pick it up. So that's it's a little bit something like uh, an escape room. Sorry to jump in, but no. I can see in an action game where it might be a little bit more like they want you to engage in that physicality, but in an escape room that yeah. isn't about that, you're using this one rather than you're, these ones, yeah. you should just be able to, to gravity grip or whatever. It is. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, there's no payoff for it being frustrating as opposed to yeah. in a, an interaction game where, you know, maybe the payoff is you have, you're distracted by having to do something. So you get shot, <laughs> you know, so, well, it's not a payoff for you, but it's a payoff for somebody else. But in this case, yeah, there's, there's little in the way of payoff. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be like that, but I will give it this, the puzzles it was a logical approach to solving the puzzles. It didn't feel like the game was pulling something out of its butt. Uh, every little step to solve the puzzles was was physically rational. Um, yeah. it, it had a real life or a real world sort of uh, uh, physics and, and mechanics to it. Like everything, it, did, it happened the way you would expect an escape room in, in real life to, to be able to work. So, which takes me sort of into the other one, which is Escape Simulator. Uh, well, escape you go on, can I, am, am I allowed to say something? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm, I'm really going to agree with you, but I just want to, uh, to really echo. My first, because you jumped straight in with me in a multiplayer game. You didn't do the tutorial. I did the tutorial, which was very yeah. simple. And it was basically just about uh, grabbing a key. I, I'll make sure. I send you the footage and hopefully you can put the footage in here. It was such a bad VR interaction that I almost rage quit out of the game without playing it. It was the tutorial was annoying. annoying. Well, not just the tu tutorial. You watch me trying to put the key in the keyhole. It didn't <laughs> work. It was broken. It was, and the the hand angle was weird. Like you, you, the the hand animations are so bad that you can yeah. only hold the key in a certain angle. So with your controller, you're kind of doing this weird thing. Okay. The VR implementations to this were so god awful that I almost quit before I played the game. The tutorial just it, it almost I, I skipped the tutorial entirely. Yeah, done well. And then <laughs> one uh, going into the game, the graphics I think is so like the textures are so poorly. Uh, rendered like they just seem so low res it's that again, money, yeah. it takes a lot of that immersiveness out of it. What it then puts back in, I will say to its defense, is a lot of atmosphere. And the idea watching that timer tick down, and the first time we went in, we we struggled to get that second puzzle. And watching that timer tick down and that zombie thing behind the, the, the cage, and you're like, that thing's going to jump scare me, like something's going to happen, and it's just going to yeah. run out that building sense of tension was quite neat. And then the other level that I played without you, again, it had that super creepy vibe. Like it was a, it was absolutely horror movie possessed doll bullshit that I got. I'm like, the, the doll room or doll house or whatever it was called, something. Yeah. And that was, that was really like, again, so it did great on the old, um, uh, on the atmosphere side of things. Hang on a second. I'm just going to reach over just because... Like, uh, uh, it was, yeah, it was proper creepy. Um, but then what I like, find creepy is that you've got a doll next to you, but never mind. Man, I've got kids. I've got stuff everywhere. Sure. Do you know, you can edit this out if you want or not. My wife insists on calling my collection of action figures dolls. And I find that offensive. Guys, in the comments, action figures are not the same as dolls, right? 
Actually, she's doing it to get under your skin. She's told us she to about see how secure people. you are in your masculinity. Oh, my masculinity is practically nothing. <laughs> anyway, I've got a, I, I didn't even have a beard. I glue this on. But she keeps talking about my Ninja Turtle dolls. I'm like, you know, dolls, they're action figures. They're fully articulated. Anyway, that's that's a little insight into my life. Um, the last point I wanted to make on another room, and I, yeah. I said this to another door. Sorry? Another, another door. door. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, another door. It just showed you. I think what it does more than sells itself as a game is it sells the medium. It was fun. It was poorly implemented from a VR perspective. It was gritty and hurt my eyeballs. And I will, if we get the chance, play it with you again because escape rooms in VR with a friend is wicked. It's so good. It's, 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 it's sort I, of a perfect I, genre for VR, to be honest, it, for collaborative hmm. VR. And so, yeah, I, I think another door does very well at reminding you that it's just a great genre to play, and if you get the chance, you should. Um, yeah. But then, now we can segue over to uh, Escape, Simulator, Escape Simulator, which I think did it. It is called Escape Simulator. You are correct. Somebody give him a lollipop. All right. So back over to you, and tell us more about this one. Escape Simulator. Um, much more col colorful. Uh, much brighter. Uh, the whole, it, it's a lot more polished, I have to say. Uh, it, like, it's a lot more polished. Even when you, right when you start, you get a customization option where you can customize your avatar. You can, you know, whatever you've got male, female, you've got all kinds of different clothing, skin tones, you've got all kinds of different outfits. You can customize your facial hair, your hair, your whatever. It's, it's a, there's a lot of polish right when you start. And then it also has, it also seems to have a lot more levels, uh, rooms to play than than we got in uh, in another door. Another door had five rooms essentially, so it's a five mm. escape room experience. Um, with uh, with Escape Simulator, like it has like you've got a whole bunch of uh, main levels, and then you've got some DLC levels, and yet then you've got some community levels. You've got like or whatever it was called. Like there's three different tabs. Each tab has a bunch of levels. And I was surprised to see that, okay, like like when we played um, when we played another door, like the first the, the escape room had sort of two rooms to it in the sense that one room led to another, and then you completed the puzzle and you walked out. I don't know if that's the pattern for for uh, for another door or not. I don't know if all the rooms are sort of divided into sub rooms, but with Escape Simulator, like even when we played the Egyptian level map. Um, when you click Egyptian level or whatever that level was called, the Egyptian themed one, it had like eight or seven or, I don't know, six or eight sub rooms. So you play a room and then you could go to the next one. You could go, go to the next. It had five? I think so. I, I think there's remember. five themes and each one has five. I remember looking at it and going, oh, 25 levels. That's really good. Oh, okay. So you kind of did a rough count. But yeah. there you go. A, a lot more levels and a, a lot more gameplay opportunities, I, I suppose, than than uh, than we saw in another door. Um, well, you think another door put uh, just under forty minutes on the clock? So the expectation is that that one's a, a longer experience, whereas the the level that we played, that Egyptian level, put twenty minutes on the clock. So that's true. There's more of them. But you're expected to move through them in a little bit of a snappier progression. That's true, but even if it even if it had five like Egyptian themed rooms in, in, in that thing, then that's still five times twenty, which still gives you you know it still gives you an hour, which would be still more than what you're getting in uh, hmm. from another door. So you know if you make the calculation, fun, right? what's that? No, they were fun too. Like the the they were lighter. It was fun. You didn't have that the, when we played, the room was a lot smaller, a little tighter, so it kind of felt like we were walking around each other all the time. Uh, but the VR mechanics are down. The VR mechanics work. Objects snap into place. You can remote grab things that fall off the floor. You've got an inventory. You can put things in your sack. You can push a button, get your inventory out, pick objects out of it. It's a lot more built for VR. It's, it feels a lot more VR native. I don't know if it originally had a 2D version or not, but it feels a lot more VR native than another door did. Um, the one caveat I think about it is that I would mention, if we're especially if we're com comparing to another door, is that y your brain will only take you so far because some of the some of the solutions were a little bit magic. Uh, I remember there was this. Um, 
there was this uh, statue of, uh, of, of the Sphinx, and to solve a little bit of a puzzle, you had to take the statue, dump it into one of the fountains, dump it into water, basically, where it transformed magically into a uh, part of a pyramid. And I'm like, what? What? what no, because you didn't, we were, so everybody, when we played, we it's worth mentioning, we had an issue where we couldn't get our voice chat working. So yeah. what you missed is at the start, I picked up the little Sphinx and it had a symbol at the front, which gave, uh, you know, the, the book. Water uh, symbol. Trans- no, it didn't have that. I had oh, to yeah. First it had some other symbol. Darkness. And so I had to put it into a hole in the wall that was dark and then the symbol transformed to water, indicating that you then go put it under the thing. It wasn't magic at all. It was just because we couldn't communicate and I couldn't say, hey, I've done this step. And no, now no, no, this no, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, no, no. Let, these are two different things. So, yes, there was a logical path, as you're saying, to get to that conclusion, but that's magic. <laughs> I mean, putting a sphinx into water and having it transform into a piece of a pyramid, that's still magic. It's, oh, okay, it's, fine. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? There's there, there's still a leap where it's like pure magic. Um, I didn't okay, fine. fine. You know, I didn't catch the, the part that you sent, again, because the voice chat thing was, was not working, but... So yeah, there's a logical way to get to it, but I'm just saying there's a bit of, you know, fantasy magic stuff going on, which maybe some people would would rather have something that feels a lot more concrete, like another door, as opposed to something where uh, physics is a little more flexible, let's say. (laughs) I mean, my only uh, disagreement with that is, I would 100% agree with you if the solution was far-fetched. But because the Fair. logic is consistent across the level, you, you find yeah. the thing, it says darkness. You then put it into darkness. Put it, it into darkness, water. it reveals the water. water. That makes sense. So if the thing that happens when you achieve the goal is a bit fanciful, fine. But then I have a question for you. Okay. If it was the case that you, because I didn't put it into the darkness to reveal the water symbols, you, did, you put it into the darkness to reveal the water symbols. So why was I the one who took it and put it in water? Because I'm stupid. You didn't have to make me say that on the fucking thing. Like, I'm not <laughs> trying to make you say I'm just, I'm just, no, because it, it sort of goes against your point of it being very logical. If it was that logical, then as soon as you saw the water symbol, it, it, one thing should have led to another and you should have put I didn't it in water. See the water I, put it okay. out of, I put it I in didn't water. see the water that was dribbling down the side. I put it into the water out of sheer frustration. Ah, fair enough. Because I'd seen that that symbol was water, and I was yeah. like, oh, okay, something with water. I'll get to that later on. I literally just didn't see that there was water cascading. The, the and the moment you told just... me that that's what happened to get that last piece, because I was solving the, the numerical code when you got that last piece, so I didn't see what you did. How, I, again, didn't, I didn't get how you solved the numerical code. That mystified me completely. I'm not but again, that you... stupid, because I'm not that stupid. No, you're pretty smart. But I've yeah, the distracted. lack of audio, I, we don't know what happened with the lack of audio. There, it, I, I'm assuming that it was because we were trying to get on a meta call first and it wasn't working. So maybe the the meta wouldn't like this, the hardware, the headset just wouldn't let us get into the voice chat. Um, we sh- I mean, I, I assume it works normally. It, it, voice chat is a fairly standard feature. But yeah, not having the voice chat did impact the, the fun value of, of the experience, I have to say. So look, that's, I think, the amount of time that we can dedicate to that. Otherwise, we're going to go over. So final thoughts on the two escape rooms, which are you most eager to get back into and play? Probably, probably Escape Simulator, just because there's less friction between you and the world. Uh, it's better tailored for VR. It's, it's just a smoother experience. Uh, the graphics are nicer, and I just feel there's more meat to it, honestly. Uh, but I can't imagine that it, 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 it because the the actual genre is fun itself in VR. It, I and because of it is you know the problems with another room, another door aren't you know bad enough to make you not enjoy it. I think it'll sort of be a matter of taste to some extent. If you want, you know, if, if you're a horror fan and you want something grim and dark and whatever, and, or, you know, you, you, you like to be creeped out a little, I imagine people going to that. But it, like, I wouldn't play, I wouldn't play uh, Another Door with my son, for example. I would, I would happily go into Escape Simulator to, to play that with him as much as he wants. 
mm. you know? Um, same, same with, with my daughter as well. Yeah. So overall, I, I would give the edge to Escape Simulator, definitely, just for a better VR adaptation, more content, more customizability, uh, overall polish. Um, I think it wins out, unless you really want a creepier sort of experience. I agree. 100% agree with you. And I'll be honest with you, sweet viewer. I don't think I've called you sweet enough yet, viewer. Uh, sweet viewer, I don't think that there's much chance that I'm going to be able to get back into these uh, escape rooms on this side of Christmas, to be honest with you, because there's so much coming out. So but what I'm out. really looking forward to, having like wet my whistle for this one, is when we get into the long dark of January and February, I quite look, look forward to going to Omar. Actually, do you remember those escape room games? Let's go back in and play them. They were definitely mm -hmm. good enough that I yeah. want to go revisit them again. I just think that uh, with the, the crazy release schedule that's coming up now, I just won't have the time. But yeah, totally agree. Favor mm -hmm. escape simulator slightly more, but we'll probably play them all all the way through if time allows. Agreed. So what's next? You're hacking zombies, apparently. Grr, fuck you, zombies! Grr. Now, this is another Impressions one, guys. Uh, this game comes out on the 17th, on the super busy day. It's not embargoed, so we're allowed to give you our impressions. And to be honest with you, I don't think we would be able to fit it into next week. So rather than holding off and, and seeing if we could review it, I thought that we'd maybe just give you a few first impressions of... Uh, I've played about an hour, I would say. And I want to tell a little story if I can. I'm going to indulge myself. But back when I very first got into VR and the Quest One had just come out and there wasn't a huge game library and I was so obsessed, I knew every game that was possibly going to be ported. And Undead Citadel hadn't been released yet. It was, will they? Will they ever make a Quest? And they were, it was coming towards no, PC. No, we had it on... We had it on PC VR. I remember playing it. I put a first impressions video of it on the channel back then. You know. No, you say back then. That was late 2022. I'm talking about this game has been in development since 2019. 2020, oh, I, I didn't before, even know. Okay. Before COVID did what COVID did, I remember oh. watching a, a video of Gamertag VR at one of those uh, Gamescom or something like that playing a first build of it. And I messaged him. I was so into it. I was like, dude, what was it like? Was it any good? <laughs> uh, I told you I was a hyper fan back then. Um, and he was very kind and he took the time to answer all my questions. So good for him. Um, Kudos. What I, I just couldn't stop thinking about it because at that point there weren't any melee games. There was nothing else like that on the market. So now we fast forward to 2024 and they finally got it out on, onto a, a standalone hardware. Yeah. But they are now competing against Swordsman. They are now competing against uh, Blade and Sorcery Nomad. They are now competing against, to a much lesser degree, Gorn and uh, Barbaria. So how does it stack up? Now, I have jumped in and there are, there's a story mode and there's a horde mode. So first up, story mode, campaign mode, that's a good thing, right? Everybody wants an actual proper single player campaign. So sure. as the campaign starts you play sir anvil something something who is essentially a mercenary in search of a brothel uh there's other stuff <laughs> to it. uh he's cursing the gods he's on a rainy mountain oh look a citadel i wonder if i could fuck someone do, 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 do. No, it's really that. That crass. honestly i'm not i'm not just being too glib here no no no. he's he's absolutely right that's that, that was the one of the first things i heard when i played the game on pc vr yeah, and it's uh, so he wanders in, and there's undead people, and he's very upset because he had really, really hoped to find a brothel, uh, and now those hopes are dashed. Uh, in terms of it being a story, and again, I'm only an hour in, anything could happen. It's a story driven campaign insofar as you walk forward through a bunch of different kill boxes, and some dialogue happens in between. There's no real character development that I was seeing. Uh, within the hour, he went from being Captain Anvil, someone, someone who uh, just wants to get laid, to suddenly being, I must get to the top of the Citadel and defeat the mighty evil. Like, why? Like, your character <laughs> at the beginning was the sort of guy who would go, see that things were bad, grab a bite to eat, and then go somewhere else. That's who you set this character up to be. The brothels are out of business because of the evil. Yes, but he could go to the next place that doesn't have the evil. Like, his character was not established in such a way that he was altruistic in any way. Grab a sandwich. Yeah. 
off to the next town is yeah, what I would have yeah, expected. Yeah. And then suddenly he's he's turned into a hero and he's off to hack and slash. Now you I know me. It's only not a story in the sense that there's a progression. There's yeah, a linear exactly. sort of progression, but yeah, not. If you're looking for deep character arcs where where you care for the main character. Yeah. I don't think you're going to get that. If you're looking yeah. for something that gives you, I don't know how many hours the campaign's going to be, but it gets you to go through the various levels and stages and, and execute the gameplay over and over again. Yes, it's got that. So I don't mean to be too glib about that. Uh, anyway, so it is a physics-based uh, uh, combat system. I remember back in the day they were going for what they called a hybrid uh, uh, system, so it wasn't full physics-based. There was a little bit of something else going on. I can't really explain that. It felt fairly physics-y to me, but uh, quite light. Like, it's definitely not Wiggle Sword. You can't just walk up. Like, do you remember when we were playing Everslaught and we were just oh, going, oh, God, like yeah. This? Yeah, that was, that was horrible. Was yeah. It's not like that. You've really got to put a little bit of weight. The two-handed weapons, if you don't hold it with the other weapon, you can't really raise it up. Uh, so it yeah. does have that kind of weight and physics to it, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, the, the enemies, the NPC enemies have some nice animations and like they'll do some stuff and you, it's really quite hard to predict are they is that in animation going to end high low left or right because there are variants of each one so that's quite cool but it doesn't have the sword play like for example uh swordsman uh yeah i hate saying it's not my favorite to be honest with you but swordsman has like its actual sword play like the the ai on those characters will make you properly sword fight them Undead Citadel is much more arcadey. It is way more of a hack and slash game. So know that yeah. going in. It's absolutely not. Blade and Sorcery has better physics uh, and more options in terms of uh, magic and things like that. This is really, you've got a bow and arrow or you've got a sword and shield or you've got hammers and axes and it's you versus the undead. And it's kind of cool. It is kind of cool. There are, there are There's a lot of fun to have something like come running at you and jump like this and as they're in midair stepping forward and just slicing them in half and watching them go Meh! that's fun man um yeah. it doesn't seem this early on to have a huge amount of depth in the gameplay it really is progressively more armored guys come out or they have bigger weapons or they're slightly bigger but the same technique of chopping off one of their legs and then stabbing them in the head while they're crawling it kind of works every time. Uh, you've got magic potions that you can drink and they will imbibe you with different effects. The, the green one, for example, slows time, which is fun. Like if four guys come at you, you drink one of them and then just run around like like that scene in X-Men when Quicksilver yeah. is basically just walking through. Like, oh, stab you. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Like So there is definitely some fun to be had in this game. Yeah. Graphically, ah, dude, it's rough. I think it's rough. It I took think. a bad. It took a bad hit when it moved to Quest. Yeah, because I remember on on PC VR, despite not being very excited about the game, but the graphics were pretty good. Hmm. Well, on the Quest, big hit. It, there is a lot of stuff popping in. Like you walk in, and it'll be a fairly small courtyard area. And... Yeah, I, I was about to say I'm surprised because the environments weren't very large. Yeah, but you'll see, like, the, the courtyard areas are all kind of rubble. They're they're broken downy. And yeah. as you sort of turn around, the rubble will go from being just vague fragments to suddenly coming into focus as rubble. And, like, oh. the textures are really muddy. When you go into the inside areas where it's dark, it's it reminded me a lot of Another Door in terms of, like, just that muddy, dark mm -hmm. texture. Okay. Um so I thought graphically it really, really struggled, or it, it, it struggles. Like I said, I've only played an hour. Um, the other thing that I'll say is one of the, the there, there are a few really key mechanics that haven't been implemented that I'm struggling with. I'm struggling. There's no sprint. There's no jump. And climbing, this is so weird. You can't climb on 99% of things, but you everything looks like you should be able to climb it. In 2024, you would look at these shapes and think, oh, okay, I can clearly, like, that wall is smooth, That's except for, for a pattern of bricks. Yeah. I should be able to climb that. Nope. Nope. But the one point I could find that you could climb, there was a vine that wrapped up the okay. side of the building. And you can climb on the vine. Okay. I'm like, what? Are you serious? Like, I'm climbing past bricks that look like they've been designed as a <laughs> like, ladder, but I'm holding 
<laughs> but I'm holding on to a vine <laughs> because that's a lot more sturdy and, and, and not slippery. Yeah. So there was things like that, but the, the no jump is really jarring. It's, it's really, and the, the button that should be the jump button is the crouch button. And so I'm always like going into combat. Like, yeah. from no, I should jump in it. <laughs> so I, again, it's an impressions piece. I haven't played it enough. Uh, I will definitely play it uh, uh, all the way through and somewhere. I will write my thoughts. I don't know where that's going to be. Uh, but for now, for here, I will say there is some fun to be had if you really want to chop zombies and skeletons into pieces and not have to think too much. Like it, It's hack and slash. I was, I was about to say some mindless fun if you're into it. There's, there's definitely some fun to be had there. But go in cautiously because there are... There are problems with it. There are things that are not sitting well, and I, I don't think it's going to be for everybody. And I think there's going to be some people that will be better off sticking with Blade and Sorcery Nomad. Yeah. I will say that even on PCVR, I, I, I played it once. Mm. I played it once for about an hour, and I, I not once did I, you know, did I say, hey, I want to go back, and <laughs> it just didn't happen. I mean, it's got a horde mode. That's another thing. Like, again, if you can't be bothered with the voice acting and the load screens in between sections, and really you just want to get into some nice, light arcade hack and slash, there's three maps, I believe, that launch uh, for the horde mode. Remember what it's retailing uh, for? No, I don't. I, I should know that, but I don't know that. Okay. Um, yeah. So there you go. That is Undead Citadel. Make your judgment on the 17th when it comes out. Uh, some fun to be had, not all fun to be had. Fair enough. Now, so. sweet Omar, do you know what we didn't do that we said we were going to do? The topic. The topic. We didn't let you decide, which is what I promised. So yeah. I think, can we promise this time we will? This time we will? We'll, we'll put up a poll. We'll put up a poll on in, in, our, fa in our YouTube post, so it's going to be on the community tab. We'll put up a poll. Uh, with a few ideas for topics that we're excited to discuss. And yes, uh, please leave a comment below. Tell us which of the topics you want us to discuss. And that'll be next week's uh, topic of discussion. So what you just missed, viewer, is we made a snap decision not to bring you the topic uh, discussion, topic of discussion that we had pre-prepared. We're going to let you decide. That, by the way, that is that's epic rap battles of history. If you If you don't know... You should, you should not. Um, but so the last one that we really wanted to talk to, I'm going to let you talk about this one, is... Drumroll. Into Black. Into Black by the Binary Mill, who we... we it's been one of our favorite developers since they released Resist, because Resist was incredible. We forgot to mention it in our video last week about the 20 upcoming games for Quest that we're excited about. We somehow Ooh. forgot... Boo. We forgot to mention Into Black, which is terrible. Uh, but we're here to tell you about it today. And we've only played it a little bit right now. I've, I've played about an hour and a half, maybe, something like that. But my first impressions are absolutely incredible. I'm loving what I'm seeing. Um, and I got off my session and I immediately texted Pete and I'm like, it's fantastic. I'm loving it. So Into Black, um, I didn't really know much what I was getting into. Like I, I saw the trailer and it, you know, like uh, multiplayer and you're exploring, you know, different, some kind of planet or alien world or caves or whatever. And, and you're collecting stuff. And I didn't really know much about it going in. That's, that's basically what I knew from the trailer. Um, but I put the game on, I put the game on and it wins me right away. Uh, the fluidity of the movement, just the immersiveness of it, the polish of the graphics, everything just feels right. It, cl it clicks. It just immediately clicks. And for me, the first, hey, this is really cool moment happened right at the beginning of the, right at the beginning of the game. You're in the spaceship, you're about to do the tutorial and your spaceship is getting warped into, this is like maybe 10 seconds into the game. Your spaceship is getting warped into this, uh, into this black hole and and I suddenly see you know like the the whole thing in physics where you've got the event horizon and you're going into a black hole so things start stretching like spaghetti and suddenly I see the whole spaceship the, the cockpit of the spaceship is like stretching in front of me because you're tunneling into this event horizon and I was like 
damn, that's cool. Mm. <laughs> you know, I just, I just thought it was really cool. It's a nice little touch to add, and it looked good. It was well made, and it just from that moment on, I was pretty much in the game. Um, you have this uh, little robot that's sort of guiding you. You know, your assistant robot flying around, uh, guiding you what through your ship. What's that? Jonathan is his name. Oh, his name was Jonathan. Jonathan. So yeah, so Jonathan's guiding you around your ship, and you've uh, you know landed in this uh, in a cave in a big giant cave somewhere. Um, so first you're going around in your ship. Your ship is well made. You've got like two or three levels, um, and and then you you know you make your first little thing, which you, you know you've got an axe to start with, and it's. It's a little bit God of War because you can you can throw the axe, you can retrieve it, but you could also just mine things with your axe. So it's a battle axe slash mining axe, but it's it's pretty cool. And even when you're throwing it and and everything's just polished. When you're throwing it, you've got like particle effects sort of and like a motion trail behind it. Everything just looks snazzy. <laughs> you know, like not a word that I use often because it takes a certain amount of polish to get to snazzy, but it everything just feels snazzy. Do you know um, what? Sorry, if I can jump in. Do you know what really felt snazzy to me was yeah. so you're in these really dark, big caves, and yeah, you've yeah, got yeah. a torch. But what your torch has a function is a flare function, and so you press the yes, trigger and it shoots this uh, like a glowing pod that goes. Yeah, out. I haven't seen lighting effects that good on Quest Three before. I have. The lighting is fantastic. The lighting to me, like to me, it's like what's the best thing about this new game, Into Black? The lighting. lighting. <laughs> The lighting and yeah, and that that little uh, capsule, the flare that you it, it'll bounce off the walls until it lands, and the lighting is just perfect all the way while it's bouncing and where it lands, and everything is just very well made. And it runs the there's it's smooth as hell. The frame rate is just there's no chugging, there's no stutters. There, it, it just feels the whole thing just feels smooth and, and flowy and fast. Mm. And then it does everything that it should, you know, like. Um, you know, like you you can change things that you have. You can you've got a, a mining gun, you've got a pistol, you've got a axe, you've got uh, I don't know what else you can do with your hand, and uh, even like you've got a circular wheel. Hey, that we criticized at some point because of uh, what's it called, Astro Hunters. But here it's fast, it's responsive, oh, everything works. What's it was that? Metal Hellsinger that really annoyed me. Oh, sorry, it. Metal Hellsinger. But yeah, the, the selection wheel here is perfect. You've got one for each hand. So this is sort of your utility hand and your right hand, I guess you can switch them probably in the menu, is your weapon sort of hand. Um, and when you're picking things up, again, it's you know remote grab, you're just remote grabbing things and you, you can do it very casually and very quickly while you're doing other things. It, it, everything just feels very, very smooth. And um, so yeah, I, I go into this cave and I'm exploring and I'm picking things up. I'm e e mining rocks and gathering materials. So you're you know you're collecting resources all the time. Um, and then I, I noticed a couple of things that were really cool and just you know, the game wants you to have fun and it's putting a smile on your face. The graphics are great. They're colorful. It's dark, but it's colorful. Everything feels like a neon sort of color, uh, sort of. Uh, what's the word? But I'm looking for like you know almost bioluminescence. Yeah. That's uh, you know, bioluminescence sort of that you would get in those in those uh, documentaries where you go deep under sea and and things are just glowy in a in a magical sort of way. The game feels like that, and um, you know things happen sort of like the interface is just out of the way. Like mm. it, you know, I try doing a jump and it works. So I try doing a double jump. Hey, it works. You can do yeah. a double jump. You know, I jump just onto jump. a big air dash. Yeah, yeah, everything's working, you know, and and it's just it feels very natural and intuitive. Like there is a tutorial that sort of guides you into the, like basically sort of what, what your mission is, but it doesn't really guide you that much with, when it comes to the controls, and it kind of doesn't need to. Things are happening very much the way you'd expect to. Although there are tool tool tips that are telling you what to do anyway. It's super um, what's that? And you know what? Else? It's super intuitive. Like it, it, it's the, super the, intuitive. You, if you've played enough VR games, you almost don't need the tutorial because it does what you think it's going to do. It's the opposite of my experience with Undead Citadel where I go to jump and I crouch. Everything you think, I'll do this because my muscle memory tells me to do it, is exactly what you think it's going to do. It is not. And yeah. Yeah. It's fully playable start to finish in three-player co-op or up to three-player co-op. And that's, again, a huge selling feature that you can go through whatever length this campaign is with a mate. And that's fantastic. 
Now, oh, oh, you mean Into uh, Black? Yeah, Into Black. Three playing yeah. co-op the whole way through. Now, That's I'm going to have to round this up because I'm seeing the time and also I, I really do need to go pick up my son. But um, a couple of more things I want to say about Into Black. Okay, and then I'll just pay the extra for the child care. There you go. No, you, go, 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 go. You, you, you've got a you've got the double jump, and then I noticed that you can do a, a Super Mario jump. If you jump on a mushroom, it boings you up, and it, and it just feels so much fun to be doing that in first person. So that's one thing. It steals things in the best possible way. So yeah. it steals a Super Mario jump with the mushrooms, and it steals even the Gears of War, like quick reload, like when you sh when you empty out your gun and you get the the gun sort of reloading, but there's a sweet spot where if you click again, that's it. You've got a quick reload. It takes that from Gears of War. It just everything comes together beautifully. I've played it for a short, even even in an hour, an hour and a half. This game has won me over. It, it is like like maybe you said it's 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 sort of what Astro Hunters might have, could have, should have, you know, been. Uh, it just, it, everything feels right, honestly. It's just one of those games where from start to finish, everything was just clicking perfectly with no friction whatsoever. It removes friction from the gaming experience in, in every possible way. Um, so yeah, okay, move on. Well, I mean, I, I think, sweet viewer, if you are a regular viewer, you know that we are critical where necessary. You know that we do we not usually gush. Yeah, we don't easily gush. We are commodity more easily. often than not. And yeah. for Omar to play an hour to an hour and a half of a game, and you can see the genuine enthusiasm. <laughs> uh, I only got to play because uh, I, I was at work and I, I took my lunch. Yeah, I got to play a little more. A little bit. Um, and I agree. Like, there's nothing that Omar's saying that, that uh, I'd be like, well, don't you think you're overselling it? It's a really good quality product, and I am properly looking forward to playing it. Only problem is... Omar's going to play it all this week without me because I'm assigned to two other, three other, four other games I'm supposed to cover in the next nine days, and this isn't one of them, so I have to push it down my list. By the time I get to this, he'll have finished it. You're still going to squeeze a little bit of Into Black Time. I can see that. Little I can bit, see little. it. I can see it on yeah. your face. So there you go. Sweet viewer, we there have now go. presented to you episode two. Episode number two of the six D O F reviews podcast. Cast, 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 cast. Oh. I am going to do that every time, so get used to it. Uh, as as we have said previously, please tell us what's going on in the comments. Tell me what you have played, what you are most interested in playing. Tell us if you agree with us. Tell us if you think we are handsome. Tell us anything whatsoever, but just jump into the comments and talk to us. Otherwise, you know what to do. Click the button with the thing and the bit that goes bing and all of the doodads that make us YouTube celebrators. And what was it that it was in the script for the other one? And happy gaming! Happy gaming! We'll see you all next week. Next week's going to be banging, by the way. Watch out for next week. Woo! That's very true. <laughs> see you later, everybody. Bye-bye.